Hi, 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 you guys. So I am Miss Epiphany, and I am here to read you a story as per Mr. Emile's request. I hope you guys are doing okay. I miss you madly. I miss you madly. So I have a story, and I know it's some of your favorites. Well, some of you guys really like this book. It's called Melvin the Saddish Robot. By Joshua Margolis. You ready? Melvin awakes with a familiar sense of sadness and loneliness. Those feelings have become so obvious that his friends started calling him Melvin the Sad-ish Robot. Each morning, he peeled himself out of bed to get ready for his day. And at school, he was studying to be a fixer bot, a robot that repairs other robots. One day on the way to school, Melvin ran into his friend, Larry. Hey, Melvin, do you think you can help put my arms back on? They fell off again. Sure thing, Larry, they still won't let me use the power tools at school since I keep failing basic safety 101, but I'm a whiz with this duct tape. Thanks a lot, Melvin. I didn't think that was gonna work. Do you wanna go rock climbing later today and see how this tape holds up? Becoming anxious about his results, Melvin replied, um, maybe next time, Larry, I better get going or I'm gonna be late for class. Wait a minute. Is that a <gasps> ladybug bot? Fearing rejection, Melvin's normal reaction to spotting such a rare and beautiful robot would be to run in the other direction. But gathering his courage, he blurted out, Hi, my name is Melvin. I really like your red bow. With a sweet smile, she, <laughs> a sweet <laughs> smile, she responded, Hello there, Melvin. My name is Marilyn. After a brief, awkward conversation, Melvin asked Marilyn, would you like to go on a eh, gondola ride later today? Unexpectedly, she said, that sounds like fun. And without saying another word, Melvin ran, Melvin, golly, you guys, Melvin ran off in nervous excitement. Melvin was noticeably distracted when he arrived at school. He rambled to his friend and current patient, Albert, and, and she has the coolest antennas. Um, Melvin, isn't today's session supposed to be about me? At home, Melvin computed the finishing touches to his outfit. He arrived early and waited what seemed like a lifetime for Marilyn to show up. For a robot that lives forever, that is a really long time. Discouraged, Melvin thought, I guess she's not coming. Why can't anything ever go right for me? As he sulked back to his empty apartment, Melvin cried out, I give up to no one in particular. Suddenly, Melvin was knocked to the ground by a pack of wild creatures. Hey, Melvin. Thanks for stopping these guys for me. I need to get them back to their foster home soon. Have you ever thought about adopting a pet, Larry asked? I think you would love having a new friend in your life. They keep you super busy. I don't know, Larry. It seems like so much work, but this one really seems to like me. Does she have a name? We call her BT because she only makes burnt toast. One week later... Since adopting BT, Melvin awoke to lots of snuggles and burnt toast each morning. He still had his moments of sadness, but he rarely felt lonely anymore. And new friends were waiting around every corner. Melvin, you ran off so fast last time. I had no idea we were supposed to meet. And you never told me you had a toaster dog.
In the past, Melvin feared trying new things, but now with each new adventure, the world seems so much more exciting and fulfilling. You guys recognize the bridge? Giving him the opportunity to love and be loved, to experience a new dream and challenge, and most importantly, to be happy-ish. The end. I hope you guys like the story. I love this book. And I hope you guys are reading a lot and I can't wait to see you soon and you tell me all about what you've been doing and what you've been reading. Be well. I love you like cooked food. I'll talk to you tomorrow.